I've been fortunate enough to be able to have worked with uh, Jeannie since she was 12 years old, and she's made steady progress over the years. But if you look, I believe in 2012, she won Junior Wimbledon, she won a couple 10,000s, and she's been on a steady climb ever since. And in 2013, she uh, really went from having very little ranking to really emerging from a player that was in the satellites and the futures and, and some tour events to somebody that's moved all the way up to like 30 in the world, which is an impressive run. She was in the finals of a, a tour event. She was in a couple semifinals. She had some big wins at Wimbledon. So this is really an extension of her progress. It's an ongoing growth process uh, where you are constantly trying to not only teach the technique, but one of the areas that is not commonly discussed is you have to create a vision of the player in their mind of who they're going to be. That has to be consistent with their physical skills and attributes, their game and their personality. And as you do this and you start molding this vision in their mind, where they get excited about the player they're gonna be. This is fundamental in helping players establish the right strategy, and then also it translates to good sound tactics. So this is one of the key elements. And within the context of all of that, there's always the underlining principles of striving for excellence, the principles of learning to focus on what you can control not setting your standards by other people, but more by yourself and being everything you can be. Within that concept, there are real secrets to uh, not only becoming a great competitor, but somebody that is able to push themselves and grow. Because as you focus on what you can control, it creates an inner sense of peace when you're competing or when you're on a court and you're constantly driving yourself. It also enables you as an athlete to not get too down when things don't go well results wise and conversely not to get too high when you win. Every player is different. Uh, I, uh, years ago I was working with a, a young gal for four or five years, uh, a good player. She won the US Open Juniors a few years ago. Her name was Samantha Crawford and she is you know, six foot one, six foot two. She's a power player. She's gonna, she's gonna go with heavy power on the serve, heavy power on, on the returns, take the ball early, pound it, and try to really intimidate and dictate. She's gonna be more of a linear player, that type of a player. Now, you have somebody like Sloane Stevens, and Sloane has great speed. She's five foot seven. Um, she's can create more angles. She's going to still play with some power, but can also defend better. So her game style and strategy is going to be slightly different. With Jeannie Bouchard, Jeannie is a very good athlete. She's going to take the ball very early. She's going to rush people. She's going to come forward and really try to dictate and dominate play. Emphasis on quality serving, great returning, taking a ball early off the ground, changing directions down the line frequently, and that's how we go about it. It's a great question how you deal with the expectations after the media and everyone recognizes you have a star on the rise and, and everyone wants a piece of her time and everything. And that's really a tough adjustment, especially in the case of somebody like Eugenie Bouchard, who's not only a great talent, but extraordinarily marketable. She's very bright, she's charming, she's an attractive young lady. And so everyone wants to have a piece of her and her time. So again, the idea is you have to keep the athlete focused on what is important and that they cannot focus on things they can't control. And just because other people have expectations cannot be a situation where they let that affect them on their focus and their priorities. You don't control the outcome. It sounds funny for the public, but you, you affect the outcome. 
and you you focus in on the things that you can control, like your execution, your attitude, your preparation, all of these fundamentals. And this is such a critical principle as they move up because every week you're playing great players and now you're expected to win. And if you start, folks say, well, I should beat this person, I'm ranked or this or that, you go crazy. And it's one of the secrets that great champions understand because nowadays every match they go into, they're not only expected to win, but the person that they're playing is capable of beating them on a given day. So they turn inwards and make sure they're focused on the right things. You know, you deal with, quote, inflated expectations by a, a principle that I, that I adhere to. Number one, you never crush dreams. But you can guide in a rational way. For example, let's say a player saying, oh, I want to play professional tennis, like so many of the 10, 11, 12, 13-year-olds want to. And you say, that's great. But as they go along, you say, and you know what, I, there's, there's two pathways, and I think a great pathway for you as time goes by, you're either going to go straight to the pros, in which case the writing will be on the wall, you should clearly have tremendous results, you need resources for three or four years and all this, and if not, you can continue your dream by going through college and then maturing, and you'll be able to make good decisions as a young adult. Therefore, you don't crush the dream, which is important, but you are always guiding in a direction that is, in your mind, in the best interest of the child. Further to that is no one has a crystal ball. And I got to tell you that I would love to tell you that, oh, I knew definitively that Jeannie Bouchard, when she was 12, was going to be as good as she is and, and beyond. And at 12, I didn't know for sure. I thought she had a shot, but who am I to crush that dream? And I'm glad I sure, certainly didn't. So it's a balancing act.